Hi, this is Luigi Tremontana from Craft Animations. I'm going to show you a quick tutorial on the Airplane Free, a uh, light version of the Airplane Extended, which is very good in many ways. You can't uh, fly with it automatically. One thing that many, many uh, animators um, require, actually. But uh, on the other hand, you can do all sorts of stuff with this anyway. Uh, it has a very small set of parameters here, weight, top speed, elevation speed, turn speed. And these are just, uh, well, you can't uh, miss what these do. I will just quickly show you them. Uh, anyway, so to begin with, I will just uh, rig this. And you should always think of this as a bone system for a character. And in this case, the bones system is actually for a, an airplane character. Okay, so what I will do here is I will import a, an airplane. It's an Air Force One airplane. And uh, the interesting thing here that many people probably miss in the beginning is that where did that airplane go? Well, of course, it's extremely small, but that's what you use the scaling for. Because if we have a look at this airplane here, well, here it is, and it's just so small. It's actually uh, modeled in centimeters, which is very common in Maya, not in 3ds Max, XI, or Cinema 4D, but here it is. Uh, uh, and uh, if we just decrease the scale here to one, like so, and move it to uh, the origin there, and then we move down to the airplane, then we can easily uh, scale it as it should be scaled, like that. And uh, let's just start by scaling the airplane body here approximately well let's say the size of the wings something should be referenced then you change the maximum speed here anyway it's uniformly scaled otherwise it would just pop back to uh, to uniform and that will do harm to the model I guess okay so what I do here is I put the center of gravity approximately at the same place where the airplane uh, the the Air Force One airplane has it, and that should be approximately l slightly above the, the center of the wings here. And uh, then I, yeah, I should move it in place that backwards a little like that. And uh, then I have all these bone parts: the ailerons, the rudder, the rudder and the elevator, and the propeller. The propeller it doesn't have. Now the, the little issue here is that uh, this is for more simple airplanes so there there's only one uh, set of each of these in the extender you have many more of these so you have two uh, rudders and and, and ele elevators so that you can match them to to different angles here I don't have that here I only have uh, the correct ones for these ones so I will use one of the the uh, the uh, scripts that you can find in the help pages here to align the pivots like that so I will do that for those two, like so, bang, and then I will also do the same for this one here, like that. But uh, the the thing here is that what you do also, except for just moving them in the same, is of course to rotate them so that they they match the rotations of each other, like that, and uh, scale down a bit like so and move it down a bit like so rotate it like that and maybe downwards a bit like that I won't do it very exactly you can do it much more exact than I do now when we are finished with this bone then you can rig this um, you can skin this high poly mesh to this low poly bone but since these are rigid objects that would make no sense so we just simply parent them to to this object here so I or link in 3ds max not group parent and in the future I will just use the P here like so and we do the same for this second earlier on here like that and we move it down a bit like so scale it a bit that and there and uh, we rotate it as before and that direction too uh, maybe a bit like this yeah that'll do just fine for now 
and I parented to that object's P there. That's fine. And uh, finally, we do the same thing for the the elevator here. But as you see here, we would need two ele uh, elevators here, so this won't be a nice. Um, elevator matching here but uh, just for the for the sake of showing you how you would rig such an airplane I will do it there okay so the last thing is that the body has to follow the the uh, the body bone so we parent the body there now everything is parented nice and easy here uh, and uh, we are ready to fly actually so what I will do here is to I need I need to be able to fly this airplane so I need to map my uh, input device to this specific tool. Now, I have saved this as a startup profile here, my favorite one for this one. So every time I create an instance here, well, then it maps automatically my input device to it. If you had a, a uh, keyboard, well, then you would just uh, uh, use the keyboard uh, character uh, here. And uh, if you had a joystick, you would have it there. I use a gamepad. So I always uh, make it that way and uh, let's just close it here and I know that the speed could be a little bit high here so I would just change it to say 1 and that's nice with that and then we have a weight in the weight of the airplane right now I will have a, a weight of 0 just to show you easily what, what it does here and then you can change the other speeds here and right now in the input device here we also have a an offset for the for the airplane so that it has a, a starting speed all the time you can zero this one actually I will do that and uh, because then it will start off with a speed of zero but if you have a weight then it will fall due to gravity but we don't have any weight here right now so I just start off the airplane here like that and then it starts to fly and of course I don't want to show the ugly uh, low poly part so I hide those like that and then I have the airplane flying like this mm. yeah and perhaps that speed was a little bit low let's back that up and increase the speed to say 3 and it's actually take off the wireframe shading here hit record and fly away now if we add weight to this one then it would be much more realistic here um, this would be like flying in space so you don't have uh, any any um, weight uh, that you don't have any drag from the the wind so let's back that up and add some weight to this whole rig here, let's say 10, or actually 3 as the top speed here would be nice, like that. And now if I push the push it forward here, it uh, first it falls down and if I turn the, uh, if I roll the airplane here you see that it will automatically fly to the right here as it must do with a real airplane, so it behaves much more realistic here. And of course if you want to fly this in, uh, in different situations I would immediately use the follow cam like so so let's fly with the follow cam and that will be the end of this session here right so now we're coming above and we're flying 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 yes 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 like this and uh, see what we can do here yeah we come down here for for some now obviously these speeds are way too high for this uh, Air Force One we would have to um, really make those speeds much slower so that we don't uh, we can't do these uh, impossible flights here like this uh, this is more like a jet plane I would say uh, maybe a small propeller airplane could do these fast maneuvers too but for this one I think it's quite fine. So I hope you uh, will enjoy this uh, product and uh, thank you very much for listening.